This program was recorded on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. Most Italians love their pork, and my family is no different. Stay tuned to see some of my favorite pork recipes, as well as some of my family's kitchen secrets. Cheers. Today I am cooking with pork. Pork is definitely one of the most popular meats on a traditional Italian family's table. And it's definitely one of the most popular meats in my fridge. It is something I grew up eating, preparing, and hearing stories about. And I'm going to show you some of my family's secrets and recipes today. We're going to be talking about sausage, salami. I'm going to be making a traditional Italian sausage pasta bake, a salad, and an appetizer and even a sweet and savory dessert. In front of me here, I have my Croco family's famous sausage and salami. Every winter, we buy a full pork or legs and shoulders and we spend a whole morning, we usually wake up at like three o'clock in the morning and a whole bunch of people in my family gets together and we cut, clean, grind all the meat, we season it and we turn it into sausages and into other amazing pork products. So the first products that we love to make are just our raw sausages. You'll see them here. We have our salsiccia virgin, 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 excuse me, and our suprasata version. The differences between those is that the salsiccia is red because it has paprika that my nonna brings from Italy. And the white version is like that because it doesn't have any pepper or um, pepper seasoning in it. It's just pure salt and meat. This here is made like this and um, we freeze it so that we can cook it fresh either on the barbecue or in the oven or using it in a dish like I'm going to show you in a little bit. And then this version here is actually where we take this fresh sausage, that's why it's on a little string, and we hang it to cure in my Nona's cold storage room, which we call a cantina. A lot of European families will have a, a little room underneath a staircase or in a basement somewhere called the cold storage room where they store things like jars of sauce, wine, and they actually cure the meats. We do it in the winter because it's the perfect temperature. We try to start curing in January and then the meat for, um, the cured meat, sorry, the salami is ready usually in the end of March, beginning of April. We store it in vacuum seal bags and we eat it for the whole entire year until the next January comes and we make it all over again. I actually have my oven set at 450 and I'm going to go over there and pop these into the oven to get them roasted so that I, they are ready to use in my pasta dish. As I pop these into the oven, I'm also going to come back and grab all of my ingredients for the uh, meatballs that I'm going to show you how to make. This is my Nona's recipe, it's secret. I did leave a couple little things out of it because I can't tell you all the real secrets, but pretty, pretty, pretty close. I'm gonna use gloves because it's raw pork and I don't wanna get all that meat stuck underneath my nails. So I have two pounds of ground pastured pork. I love to use pastured pork um, instead of conventional because not only does it have more nutrients and more bioavailable nutrition, it's better for the environment and better for your tummy and better for the pigs. They're happy, they eat the food that they're supposed to eat and they get to live a happy life running around. If you are looking for pastured pork, I bet you you could find it at one of your local markets or at one of your natural food stores. So I've got the ground pork here. Sometimes meatballs are made with a mix of half pork and half beef or half pork and half veal, but today I'm just gonna use pork. I've also got some fresh garlic that I'm going to grate into my meatball mix two cloves, you can never have too much garlic. And then another thing that is inside all meatballs 
is breadcrumbs. I have these gluten-free breadcrumbs that I'm going to use, but of course you could use whatever ones you have on hand. Or if you don't use breadcrumbs at all, you could use something like almond meal or a little spoonful of coconut flour just to soak up that moisture. Probably going to put about a half a cup in there. An egg. We definitely want to bind this. If you don't eat eggs or you have an allergy to eggs, you can use a flax egg or some chia seed egg or you can buy egg replacer or even the liquid from a can of chickpeas will work to help hold this together. And this is my Nona's famous marinara. This is something that is cherished in my family. You probably saw it on the last season of Simply Cooking when I made my lasagna and used it for a couple other things. This is something that she makes multiple times a year and uh, either with fresh tomatoes or canned tomatoes that we get directly from Italy. Lots and lots of olive oil, garlic, onion, and fresh basil or parsley. We store it in these jars and we seal the jars and we use them all year, but they definitely don't last, which is why we use them multiple times. I'm so blessed to have her because she actually makes me cases of my own marinara and I get to bring them home and use them throughout. You actually have to be a very special guest or a very special client of mine to get to try my Nona's actual sauce. I'm gonna add about a half a cup of that right in there. At this point, if you eat dairy, you would add some grated parm, some grated mozzarella, some romano, some um, many, many different types of grated cheese you could add at this moment right now. If you had some fresh herbs like basil or parsley, you could add them here also. I'm grabbing my Dutch oven. These meatballs are cooked on the stove and they're kind of cooked like a dumpling instead of in the oven as some people might be used to. I like to get a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of my Dutch oven so that it doesn't stick. And the other half of this jar of marinara, I'm actually gonna line the bottom of my pan with it. And we cannot waste one little drop. We don't waste anything, especially the delicious flavor of this marinara. So I'm just gonna get some water in the jar and clean it out because I don't wanna waste anything. Now I have a nice layer of sauce on the bottom of my pan and I'm going to mix and form my meatballs. Now I didn't season the meatballs with salt and pepper and that's because the marinara is already very well seasoned and the pasta that I'm going to make is also going to be very well seasoned and I don't want this dish to turn out too salty. Now look. The eggs might be a little bit bigger than I thought, and so my mix is still a little bit moist. So I'm actually just going to grab, probably put them all in actually. I think I'm going to be making a little bit more meatballs than I thought. That's kind of the consistency now that I'm looking for. You can see that the mixture kind of holds itself together a little bit. It's um, a bit more conducive than it was when it was all mushy and of course I'm making a mess but that's why I'm wearing an apron and I have gloves on and my hair up because I knew that this is a messy job but I promise you the mess is totally worth it. These meatballs are formed large so they're like this. I place them around the Dutch oven and just for TV's sake I'm going to do a few and then I'm going to show you what I do so that we can have this all ready by the end of the episode for you all to see. So I've got my meatballs here. They are sitting in the sauce. And then what I actually do is I open the second jar of marinara and I cover the meatballs with the sauce so that they're fully submerged. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Dutch oven after I've formed the rest of these meatballs and I'm going to place it on the stove on medium low with the lid on. And these are going to simmer for probably 45 minutes. While that's happening, I'm going to drop my fazili pasta noodles into the pot of boiling water that I have going behind me. I'm going to salt the water very well so that I can season the pasta as it's boiling. And we're going to see you after the break when we'll finish up 
all of these things and you'll see what I'm about to do. My pasta is all cooked and I'm going to drain it. This is a gluten-free brown rice pasta. So unlike regular gluten pasta, I want to rinse it. You would never rinse pasta that has, glu that has gluten in it. My Nona would stop you. You want all of the starch on the outside of the pasta to hold on to the sauce. But because this is gluten-free and it's made with rice, I want to rinse all that starch off because otherwise it will get goopy. Also, if you let the gluten-free pasta sit too long hot, it'll actually kind of clump together and become mush. And we definitely don't want that. We don't want our guests or anyone who's eating this to know that it's gluten-free. And they won't, especially if you rinse it. I've got this water really nice and cold. And I'm rinsing my pasta. I also took my beautiful sausages out of the oven. They're nice and cooked. They've been cooling and I'm going to cut them up to use in my casserole dish that I'm going to make right now. Excellent. Look how beautiful this is. All the delicious juices that have come out. I'm definitely not going to waste this. One of my favorite things to do with this pan actually is I'm going to save this pan for later, chop up a bunch of potatoes and onions and coat it in this delicious fat and actually bake them and they will be unreal. This is a little bit hot, but not too hot. I'm gonna quickly grab my trivet. Sorry, I missed that. Slide that on there. And this is the sausage I'm gonna save for later. As you know me, I always cook more than I need so that I have things left over for later in the week when I'm busy. So these two sausages I'm gonna save for another meal. I'm gonna cut these up on an angle. Oh, look at that. Delicious. It's too hot for me to touch. So I'm using tongs. You could cut this into smaller pieces, but I like nice big chunks of sausage in my pasta dish. Oh, I can smell the chili powder in here or the, the pepper powder in here. All right, I think actually that's enough. So gonna get these in here look at that and I've got my pasta noodles get that in my casserole dish perfect look at that I'm going to add the other half of the jar of marinara that I use for the meatballs and again we don't waste anything so rinsing that out and that's not enough so I have another little jar of marinara here. And again, rinse that out. Great. And I'm just going to use the same tongs that I used. Give this a nice stir. Get all of the sauce mixed in. I have this dairy-free mozzarella cheese here. It's actually made uh, by a company from Greece and it only has three ingredients, coconut, tapioca and actually culture so it's fermented like real cheese but if you're not dairy free you could use real mozzarella a mozzarella ball you could shave some fresh parm on here or some uh, romano cheese or you could leave the cheese out all together i want to sprinkle this on so that it'll get nice and brown and delicious look at that I'm also going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there. It's gonna help brown the cheese because it's not real cheese. Perfect. Now I'm gonna set my sausages to the side. I'm gonna pop that in the oven on the break, but first I'm gonna grab my ingredients for the other things so that I can get both my sausage bake and my other stuff in the oven at the same time. So I have two more pork products here. I've got this beautiful pancetta, which is an Italian version of bacon. And I have this beautiful prosciutto. First, I'm going to work on the pancetta. 
Um, as an Italian girl who's also Canadian, I definitely couldn't do a show on pork without pancetta, but I also couldn't do a show without a little bit of my Canadian heritage. We have some pure Canadian local maple syrup here. And this is going to be for the dessert. I'm gonna pour a little bit of this maple syrup on this plate here. You could use a pastry brush, but I don't wanna to continue to dip back into the jar because I don't wanna contaminate my jar with any pork. So I've got these beautiful rounds. When I went to the deli, I asked my deli girl to cut it a little bit thicker for me, kinda of like a thick slab of bacon. I'm gonna dip this into the maple syrup. Look at that, yum. I'm sure some of you have tried, you know, a maple bacon donut before or something like that. This is kind of a play on that. But instead of serving it on a pastry, we're going to serve these on some delicious vanilla ice cream. I need a tiny little bit more maple to make up the rest of them. These are gonna go into the oven at 400, and halfway through the baking, I'm going to take them out and baste them again with a little bit more maple syrup and probably flip them over. They're gonna bake for something like eight to 12 minutes. There's something that you want to watch because we want them to get nice and crispy like bacon. And as some of you may already know, that minute between, um, like under crisp and burnt is like a 10 second window. So you really kind of got to watch, which is why I don't have an exact time for you. Look at that. Now these are ready to go into the oven with my pasta casserole, which I'm going to do as soon as we go to break. But first I'm going to do one last little quick thing and get my appetizer plate ready for us. We've got the main course pasta dish, the dessert here, my meatballs on the stove simmering, and now I'm gonna work on a little bit of a salad. This is prosciutto. It's cured um, pork, similar to the pancetta, it's just a different part of the animal. The pancetta comes from the belly, just like bacon does, and the prosciutto is a leg. And I'm not gonna use the whole thing, and I've got these beautiful bosque pears here. I'm gonna give this a good rinse since the label was still on that and going to cut it into four. So my meatballs are on the stove. They're on simmer, on really, really low with the oven, um, with the Dutch oven lid on. And I'm not gonna stir them. And why is that? I don't want to stir them, but because they're dumplings, if I stir them and agitate them too much in the pot, they will break apart. Unlike uh, meatballs that you would have seared in advance or maybe baked in the oven first, those ones can be moved around because they have like a crust on the outside that helps hold them together. Whereas these meatballs being like a dumpling, um, they're quite delicate. Oh my goodness, I have pear on my shirt. So I have these beautiful quarters of pears. I'm gonna turn them into eights. I'm gonna show you a few and then I'm gonna pop these into the oven. So each one of these prosciutto pieces, I'm going to wrap it around a pear and I'm going to make a whole entire platter that looks like this. And then later on, I'm going to show you what I'm gonna garnish it with and turn this into a delicious appetizer. I think I'm gonna do three for you just to show you how that goes and get an idea. And then when I'm on the break, I'm gonna wrap up the rest of these pieces for us. All right. We've got pork, pancetta, glazed with maple, and we've got my pasta bake ready to go in the oven. The oven was set at 450 for my sausages, but I turned that down to 400 because I knew I was going to get these into the oven. So I'm gonna head over to the oven and pop these in. This guy's gonna bake for probably a good 35 minutes until the cheese is nice and melted. And these guys are gonna bake for about eight to 12 minutes. I'm gonna watch them really, really closely and baste and flip them halfway through. And we're gonna see you guys after the break.
Look at this spread, a traditional Italian feast. My meatballs are cooked through and I just took them off the stove. Look at them. They are delicious looking. Let me pull one out. Oh, it's so soft and tender. Yum. I have to taste this right away. Let me move this to the side. A little bit of parm cheese. This one's dairy free, but you can use the real kind. Oh, look at that. A little bit of fresh basil. Nothing like Nona's meatball. Look at the softness of this, like a dumpling. Oh, it just falls apart. It might be too hot, but I don't care. Mmm. The taste of my childhood. Yum. So, we have the meatball that I just took a big bite out of. We've got the beautiful prosciutto wrapped pears here. I've put them on a lovely bed of arugula. This is the perfect thing to go with something a little bit tart. I have this reduced balsamic here. I'm gonna give this a lovely drizzle. Oh, look at that. Oh, yum. And I think this needs a little bit of perm as well. What a perfect appetizer. So we have the prosciutto wrap pears drizzled with balsamic glaze and a little bit of parm as our appetizer. We have our baked pasta bake with the homemade sausage, my Nona's marinara and mozzarella on top. And of course you cannot have a fresh pasta dish without some fresh basil leaves just kind of sprinkled over the top. Nothing like that. Look at that. And of course one last drizzle of olive oil. A traditional Italian table will always have known as homemade bread, which is right here. She makes this with her own hands. Growing up, we didn't have toast bread or what you would know as American or North American white bread. This is the bread that we grew up with. This was always on the table. And on any Italian feast, there's always cut pieces of salami with bread as an accoutrement to go with everything else. But my Canadian Italian self can't go without using maple syrup in a dessert. This rounds out the meal so nicely. I'm going to make two because sometimes you want to have dessert before the main course. I took this ice cream out of the freezer about 20 minutes ago. Unlike dairy ice cream, it actually um, is quite hard. So when you're using dairy free ice cream, it's a good idea to take it out so that it's scoopable. This is made with coconut milk. Oh, look at that. One scoop in there. Another scoop in here. My camera guys are salivating. I have to have something ready for them. This is that pancetta that I crisped up and basted with maple. I basted it twice in the middle of baking. And look at that. The crispiness is exactly what we're looking for. A nice little piece of pancetta on top of our ice cream some walnuts for a little bit of contrast and crunch. We've got the Canadian side maple syrup with our ice cream and walnuts, but the last little PS that's going to just round out all the flavors is a little tiny drizzle of balsamic on my ice cream. And actually, as we all know, basil's my favorite flavor. A little tiny basil on this is just perfect. I don't think I even have a spoon, but I don't really care. I can't wait. The crisp of that pancetta, did you hear that break? Mmm. A lot of people think a big Italian feast would be difficult and time consuming to make, but if you spend the amount of time and have passion in what you're doing, it's really, really simple. See you next time.